Let's go over to 110.17. I find this interesting, and Dave, here's that maintenance, kind of like, what the heck's going on here? New rule was added to clarify the differences between servicing and maintenance. I'm not sure if that's true. You said it, I'm not sure. So, of equipment and reconditioning equipment. Okay, we rule that clarified between servicing, maintenance, reconditioning. However, it's been required. However, it has requirements as to who and how servicing and maintenance can be performed. So, Brian, you think about this servicing, maintenance, and reconditioning. Let's see what happens here. We might have to pop up a uh, NFPA link, so because I just truncate things to fit on a graphic. Equipment, servicing, and maintenance. Oh, no, this doesn't say I have to maintain it. I don't think. Well, you bring a blink. Equipment, servicing, and maintenance must be performed by a qualified person. Ah. Follow, mani maybe say following, Mario. Okay. Manufacturer's instructions and use identified replacement parts approved by the authority have a jurisdiction. Guys, let's bring this up, Ryan. Does this require me to maintain it or it just says that if you're going to service it and if you're going to maintain it, then the person has to be qualified and following the manufacturer's, with the QR code, right? That's right there, maybe. Okay, let's read the actual code. Servicing and electrical preventative maintenance shall be performed by qualified persons trained in servicing and maintenance of equipment and shall comply with the following. Okay, I don't have to service it and I don't have to maintain it. Right, right, that's correct. But if I did, you want a qualified person. This is almost like it's a huge like kumbaya language. You're like, hey, right, you right. know, the guy should be qualified in service yeah. and maintain. And let me tell you what this is good for. This is good for an electrical contractor to snag this thing, send it out. You got a bunch of ghost guys out there. They're not qualified to service that generator. You need to have a, the code requires you to have a person who is qualified. And of course we get into the definition of qualified. That's all I have to say, right? Now back to the, so let's go back to the 90 dot. <coughs> 90 dot 2B, the adequacy of the code. Yeah, talk about that. And it references the code contains provisions that are considered necessary for safety. Okay. It says compliance therewith and proper maintenance. So it's referenced right in the beginning. Resulted in an installation that is essentially free from hazards, but not necessarily efficient, convenient, adequate for good service or future expansion of electrical use. So it doesn't so the, require. So there no, does require maintenance in the be, in the beginning sections of. But the it code. doesn't require me to maintenance. No. no. And we also have NFPA 70. Oh no, let me hold on. I, I'm going to go with this for a second. What Dave is saying, 90.2b B. says that if you install it and if you service it and maintain it, it's going to give you a, a relatively safe installation. Right. Yep. And what's really important that somebody said to me one year, I don't know when it was. They said, you know, Mike, Article 90 has no requirements. Right. It's just like a talk. She's like, hey, let me tell you what's going to happen here. How When you use starting in 100. Now, I don't, as a matter of fact, I bet you we go to 90.3, <clears throat> it probably says, and it doesn't include 90. It says Chapter 1, 2, 3, 4 are general requirements. Chapter 5, 6, 7. Article are 90 is an introduction. Huh? Article 90 is an introduction. The title, the title of Article 90. So there are no requirements in Article 90. Right. It tells you what's covered and not covered by the code. Right, but it's, but it's not a requirement. Right. It right. just establishes, hey, when you start yeah. applying the requirements, but you can't apply the requirements of something that's not covered by the code. So 90, and when I heard that, I thought, I never thought of it that way. I kind of thought that 90 was a code. Well, it's not a code requirement. And it's telling you that if you install it and you service and maintain it, that's how you're going to get ensure as you know, as safe as you pro possibly can. And then we go to 110.17. Um, it just says that if you're going to service it and maintain right. it, then that person needs to be. And I got a feeling somewhere, remember the, the arc flash label now? That's the first time it's requiring us to put it in there. But it started with like a little label that says, just say it's an arc flash. Right. Talking about if you do it, somewhere, some panel is going to say that, it, that this has to be maintained, shall be And once we get that, or service, was it the definition of service? Is that what it was? 
was what was the definition we covered about maintenance and service? It was servicing. Service. Servicing. servicing. So we have to make sure you use the word servicing, right? That shall be serviced. So I think we're like, okay, well, if you want to make it safe, you better maintain it. And that's where 70E comes in, right? 70B as 70, well. 70B. And 70B. Okay, talk to me about that, Dave. 70B has been a recommended practice for electrical maintenance, and that is uh, in process of becoming a standard soon. Next next year, I think it goes into effect. I'm sure the 2026 code, when we have 70B as a standard, is going to make informational note, right? Oh, yeah. So slowly... I think there's informational notes to 70B already. Yeah, there yeah are. there's informational notes. I wonder where they're at. 11014D has one. I don't know that. You're just making oh, it up as um, you're talking. I'm not. And this rule has one, too. Yeah. This rule? Yeah. Oh, and this rule here also references uh, 70B yeah. about yep. proper... Informational note, to. So right we got here. 70B here now about servicing and maintenance. Right. And, hey, one of the ways is comply with 70B. So this is the coolest thing that we have here as an electrical industry, that we're electricians and we're just working this stuff here, and all of a sudden we got cybersecurity. We got our flash labels, you know, we have safe work practices, now we have servicing, we have maintenance. And what are we trying to do? Like I said, I mean, you see, and, I, I, and sometimes I cry when I'm involved in these cases to hear what's going on, is we want to be the people that are going to protect the people that don't have that ability. And that's why it's so important to me that, that you just keep learning and you keep getting better at it. And it's overwhelming, but to me, it's just so cool. So. I think we understand now the servicing and the maintenance, 